In our previous videos we got our player jumping around on these platforms and doing wall jumps and wall slides. Now we're going to add animations to all of these movements. So let's get started. To do animations we're going to need to add some windows. So if you go up to the top and click window, go down to animation, animation, and I'll drag this right down the bottom. Then go back up to window, go animation, animate tour, and we'll leave this tabbed here. Cool. Next we'll bring in the sprites we want to use for our animations. Some of these are single frame assets I've taken from Kenny's tile map and others are ones I made myself by editing his sprites. You can get all these on my Patreon if you want to use them. So I'm just going to drag these into our sprites folder in our assets in Unity. Double click on here and in this folder you can hold down control and select all our character sprites and avoid our tile map. Then for all of these I'm going to set them all to 16 since they're 16 by 16. Filter mode to point no filter and then compression to none and click apply. Then I'm going to go to the ones that are multiple sprites and hold down control so that's idle and walk for me. Click on these and change sprite mode to be multiple. Click goodbye. Then individually I'll go to idle first, go sprite editor, click slice and grid by cell size, then set this to be 16 by 16 and click slice, apply, close that one off, go to walk, sprite editor, slice, grid by cell size, 16 by 16, slice, apply. And now you can see if we open up our idle, you can see it split this into two separate sprites. We can use these as our frames in our animation. For jumping, wall slide and fall, I've just got single frames. Now if we go to our player, click add component, search for animator and add an animator component. Then while selecting our player, down in our animation window, if you click create, and then I'm going to go back into our assets, and create a new folder and this will be for our animations. So if we go inside here, and I'll name this animation idle, you can see this automatically created a controller for our player's animation. If we go into the animations folder, you can see we've got a player controller now, as well as our idle animation. We'll come back to the controller later once we've made all our animations. If we go back to our sprites folder and open up idle, we can drag each of these frames into our idle animation down the bottom. The diamonds in here show your frames and the numbers at the top is the time in which that frame will play. So if we zoom into our player and then press play, you can see it's going way too fast. So we can click and drag out our second frame to around 0.30. And if we press play again, you can see it's kind of jittering. That's because it gets to the second frame and then instantly snaps back to the first. To fix this, we can add another frame, either the first or second, place it at about one. You can see the speed's much better. Next, we'll add the walking animation. So under idle in the drop down, you click on this and click create new clip. Call this walk and move back from assets into the animations folder. In our new animation, we can open up walk and drag in our sprites. For our walking animation, we'll want to be a bit faster. So I'll leave it at these 0.5 intervals and add another frame in at 15. So we don't get that clipping. Cool, next we'll do our jump. So again, new animation. We'll call this jump. Then I just have one frame for my jump animation. So we just drag that in. Same with the next two. Wall slide, drag in our wall slide frame and fall, drag in our falling frame. You may have noticed in our top animator controller, you can see all the animations we're creating. This is what we're gonna set up next. So we don't need this animation window anymore. I'm gonna close that tab and expand this down. I'm gonna move these up for now. Now first, let's get our character walking. So this default entry going into idle is fine. And we'll bring over our walk animation. So to get this animated, you right click on idle, click make transition, and you'll see we can have a transition going towards walking. Then we're gonna wanna be able to transition back from walking to idling. For these transitions, we can add conditions. So to go from idling to walking when something happens. To do this, so under your animator tab, go from layers to parameters and click the plus button. Then select float. For walking, we're gonna use our magnitude. So select your transition that goes from idling to walking. So this bottom one. Click the plus and the conditions and say if our magnitude is greater than zero, which is the default. Then in our transition from walking to idling, click the plus and we want if our magnitude is less than 0.1. We're gonna edit a few extra settings here. So back on the transition from idle to walk, we'll untick has exit time, open up the settings, untick fixed duration and set transition duration to zero. All of these settings mean that our animations will be quick acting and snap to one another. We'll do the same for walking to idling. Untick has exit time, untick fixed duration and set transition duration to zero. The next step would be to add the script and show this working, but so we don't have to click around all over the place, let's get the controller set up and then we'll go into the script. 
So next let's add our jumping. We'll grab our jump animation and we want to be able to jump from any state since we could be idling, walking or wall sliding. So right click on any state and go make transition and select jump. Then in parameters, click the plus and add a trigger. And we're gonna call this jump. Now click your transition to jump. We want the same settings as before. So untick fixed duration, zero transition duration. And then in conditions, click the plus, then change magnitude to jump. That's all we need. Now after jumping, we want to fall. So we'll grab our fall animation and place it under our jump. So right click on jump, make transition and click on fall. Now on this transition, we do want to have an exit time and our exit time is gonna be one and we'll set our transition dur duration to zero. Then our interruption source is gonna be next state. So how we know when to transition from jumping to falling will be when our player has reached their peak and begins to fall down. So that'll be when our Y velocity is less than zero. So in parameters, let's add a float and call this Y velocity and click the plus in our conditions on our jump to fall transition and select Y velocity less than and leave that at zero. Next, we'll want the same thing from idle to falling in case we walk off a platform instead of jumping off a platform. So on here, we actually don't want an exit time this time. We do want a fixed duration and we're gonna set this to zero. Our conditions again will be Y velocity less than zero. Now to know when to transition from falling to idling. So make a transition from falling to idling. We'll set this transition duration to be 0.2, just a little bit less. Our interruption source of next state, so we can get walking instead of idling if need be. And our condition for this is gonna be if our Y velocity is greater than minus 0.01, an untick fixed duration. Cool, now we have one more animation to add, which is our wall slide. Like jumping, this can be done from any state. So do make transition from any state to wall slide and select this transition. For this, we want no exit time, no fixed duration, transition duration to zero. And for this condition, we're gonna need another new parameter. And this is gonna be a ball. We're gonna call this is wall sliding. We'll say in our conditions, select is wall sliding is true. Then we'll want a transition from wall sliding to idle. Select this and we'll say, yes, we want an exit time and then set transition duration to zero. And in our conditions, probably guessed it, is wall sliding is false. Now just a heads up, make sure your parameters are all spelt correctly with the right casing. Since when we set these in our script, it'll have to be exactly the same casing. I'll change jump to be a lowercase j so these are all consistent. Cool, now let's go to our script. So double click on player movement and at the top we're gonna want a public animator, animator. Then down in our update, underneath where we flip, we're gonna go animator dot set float. And in here we pass in our ID. So it's gonna be a string or an int, uh, but we're gonna use, like I said, our names. So first we'll set Y velocity, and then pass in the value. So that's our RB dot velocity dot y next we'll need one for magnitude so animator dot set float uh, magnitude and pass in rb dot velocity dot magnitude in here we can also set our animator dot set ball and set our is wall sliding since we already have a ball called is wall sliding cool now the last one we'll need is down in our jump function after we jump, we want to set our animator dot set trigger, and then we pass in jump. Oh, and we set that to a lowercase j. Yeah, and make sure your casing is right. If we highlight this and press Control C to copy, then down where anywhere we jump, we'll paste this in. So when we do a light tap, we jump. Then when we wall jump, we jump. So we'll paste this in here as well. And that should be it. Back in Unity, when we press play, if you're in focused mode, you can watch our controller switch between our different animations. So if I walk and jump and fall, you'll see it's moving. So here we can see our player walking. If I jump, you can see it does our little jump animation, which is like a pretty little ballerina leap. And as we fall, it puts his little arms up. Now let's test our wall sliding. So if I just wall jump up a bit, oh, you can see he does that cool little Spider-Man grapple. There we go. <laughs> On Patreon, you'll be able to get this package for our characters, animations, and controller. So check it out if you want. If not, see you in the next one where we'll be looking at particle effects to add even more interest to our character. I'll see you then.